Hello, everyone. I'm Rich Thayer, Documentation Manager in the Service Provider Technology Group. Thanks for tuning in to this first edition of our Hidden Gems in Cisco IOS podcast series. This series talks about useful iOS features that most customers have but don't use, features that you might not be aware of but that you can use to be more productive. In today's session, we are talking about programmability with Tracy Jan, Product Manager in the iOS Group at Cisco. Welcome, Tracy. Thanks for joining us today. My pleasure, Rich. So we're going to talk about programmability of Cisco iOS routers and switches. Um, are we talking about actual programming inside the router itself or programming off-box? We're talking about actual programming inside the Cisco device. Most people don't know that they can program their routers and switches. It is a powerful tool, and more people need to take advantage of the capability. So when I think about programmability, what comes to mind is Linux and Windows programming. Is that what we're talking about? Not really. Those are general-purpose computing platforms. Here, we're talking about a specialized capability to adapt the device to make it better fit the requirements of the business. Using programmability, businesses can provide automatic actions, set thresholds, redirect notifications, discover devices, run diagnostics, and much more. So why would someone program a router or switch? Can you give us some examples? Sure. Suppose you are a pharmaceutical company and you find out that you have a new government requirement which requires documenting every new connection to your production network. This is important for regulatory security and auditing purposes. Rather than scrambling around trying to find a third-party vendor who supplies this capability, you write up a quick script to detect new port connections, record the device information, and send notification to your central server. Then you are done. The time to build and deploy a new solution could be in hours rather than months or years. That's powerful. Can you give me some guidelines for when programming a router makes sense? Absolutely. In general, I would recommend programming to extend existing functionalities in some specific way. For example, you wouldn't want to build an accounting or payroll system in a router, but detecting new devices in network at router level makes a lot of sense. Another good use case for programmability is automating repetitive tasks, such as configuring new devices or adjusting parameters. Also, setting up network threshold to detect abnormal behavior is a great use of programming. Finally, automating diagnostics leverage programmability to detect and resolve typical network situations. Excellent. So, is this capability in every Cisco router and switch? In general, any iOS-based device, from tiny 800-series routers to huge aggregation devices, all allow programmability. With only a couple of exceptions, you can pretty much guarantee it would be an option for you. Also, most of the time, the program you write will work on any iOS device without any modification. So, what do I need on a Cisco device to get started? To get the most from a programmatic standpoint, you really need two things in the iOS device. First is something called EEM, which is Embedded Event Manager. This allows you to detect situations and take appropriate actions. Second, you need a program, programming language. Cisco iOS supports three languages depending on the version of iOS you're talking about. In the most current version, you can use Tickle programming language or something called Applet. Tickle is an industry standard language. You can Google TCL for more information. Applets are used when you want to quickly automate CLI. Tickle is used when you want to do something more sophisticated. In the very near future, you will be able to program iOS CLI in a Linux Bash shell-like scripting language. There are lots of choices there. One more question. Does all of this programmability come pre-built in Cisco devices, or do I have to download something? Out of the box, you have everything you need to get started. If you would like to download example programs from Cisco Developer Community, 
you can do that too. So, can you wrap up our session today with a story of a customer who successfully used programmability to solve a sticky situation? Sure. Let's talk about a large service provider in Japan. They wanted to implement a zero-touch deployment solution without incurring expensive additional network management system costs, and at the same time, achieve a seamless integration with their existing environment. Using the embedded programmability provided through EEM and Tickle, they implemented a solution that enabled them to shorten their service activation time by 50% and reduce the overall deployment time for their customers by over 60%. That is powerful. Tracy, where can people find out more about embedded programmability? Just check out syscode.com slash go slash EEM. Also, if you would like to download programs other people have written, just Google Cisco Space Beyond. Thanks, Tracy, for joining us. This was very informative. My pleasure. And we invite all of you to set up your RSS readers to watch for future podcasts in this series. From all of us at Cisco Tech Docs, enjoy exploring these hidden gems. <laughs>